Come on, everybody. Let's go. Get ready for a summertime adventure from another summertime story. This is the story of Light Your Candle, written and told by award-winning author Carl Summer. Stephanie lived in a big city with a dad, a mom, and her brother Billy. In her neighborhood, Stephanie saw trash in the street, broken windows, houses needing repairs, boys and girls stealing, men selling drugs, gangs fighting, and other bad things. In Stephanie's school, the students roamed around the halls and the boys and girls fought. In the cafeteria, the children threw food, and in class, the kids threw paper airplanes. Teachers were constantly yelling at the students to behave. School was not a good place to learn. Now, when you see something like this, that, that might not be your school. But I was a high school teacher in New York City. Then I took a year's leave of absence to write this book, Schools in Crisis, Training for Success or Failure. It took me 10 years to write that book. And to find what's happening inside other schools, I knew what was happening in, in the two schools that I taught, and I was also assistant dean of boys, where boys would get into trouble, they would come down to the office. So I have a lot of experience, but to find out what was going inside the schools, I became a substitute teacher. I'm gonna call up the school, and I would say I like to teach first grade, second grade, third grade. I taught all grades from one to 12, I went one day to, to the different schools in all the five boroughs of New York City to find out what was going. And what you're seeing here is some of the things I've seen. Shocking. And these poor kids will be suffering because of that kind of education that they're getting. So if you're going to a good school, you ought to be very, very happy. There are some schools like this here. Now that's why I wrote this here book, Light Your Candle. And here's a girl that decided to do something about these kind of problems that she sees. Let's see what she does. One day while Stephanie was walking with her friends, Lori and Cindy, they saw a boy grab a purse from the lady and run. Stephanie shouted, help! That boy just stole that woman's purse! Lori screamed, catch that thief! But no one tried to stop the thief. The boy ran around the corner and disappeared. Stephanie and Lori went to the lady and asked, Are you all right? Yes, dear, said the lady. Thank you so much for trying to help. I'd like to warn you, don't do this if there's no one around. You don't try to stop a thief. You just better get out of the way. But unfortunately, some of our cities have incidents like this here. And you live in a good area, you ought to be very thankful for it. So better to keep quiet, but if you can do something to help, and like they're trying to help this poor lady, and they, in other words, you can see something in the girls that they're trying to be kind, they're trying to be helpful. And that's always a good thing when you try to help other people. Cindy said to her friends, what can we do about these troublemakers? I don't know, replied Stephanie, but we should try to do something. What can three girls do, asked Lori. It's hopeless in this big city. Just then, a gang called the Skulls came strutting down the street with bats and sticks. They were going to have a fight with the Scorpions. What are you going to do about these gangs, Stephanie? asked Lori. Do you think you could stop them? Stephanie never said a word. Then Lori added, Even if we do something good, one little candle in the big dark room doesn't do any good. I guess you're right, mumbled Stephanie. It's a shame we can't do something that makes a difference. That night, as Stephanie lay in bed and thought about the things that she had seen that day, she wondered, isn't there anything we can do? Everything seemed so hopeless. Finally, she fell asleep. What kind of boys were in Stephanie's neighborhood? Mercy? Gangs. Gangs. 
unfortunately, there's gangs in some big cities. I read it now today in the newspapers. And they do very bad things. And how do they get members to join them? They get young children. They say, you want to belong? We protect you. You, you belong to us. And there's a two-letter word I want you to learn to say. And that's the word N-O. Can you all say it real loud? No! Good. That's what we should do. And if they want to, drug addicts, and also in these neighborhoods, they sell drugs. And that's what you should also say to dr dr drugs. What should you say? No! Very good. And, you know, it takes guts sometimes to be different than anybody else. Or maybe your friends might do it or somebody else. And usually it's peer pressure. You may feel that you're the only one. And everybody's pressuring you to join the gang or take drugs or do something that you know you shouldn't do it. But that's where boys and girls who have courage will say, no, I'm going to do what's right. I don't care what anybody else says or does. The next day, Stephanie said to her friends, we need to find a way to help people like that lady yesterday. We can't solve everyone's problems, said Lori. Suddenly, Stephanie stopped and with great excitement said, Lori, remember when you said, one little candle in a big dark room doesn't do any good? Yes, replied Lori. Well, said Stephanie, one candle does do some good. It lights one area. If we just help one person, we're doing something that's good. That's not doing much, sighed Cindy. It helps that one person, said Stephanie. Besides, our doing good may encourage others to do the same. Then our one little candle will become many candles. You're dreaming, said Lori. Let's meet at my house this afternoon, said Stephanie. Okay, said Lori and Cindy. Notice what Stephanie is saying here. They first said, what's the use of lighting one little candle? That's not going to show much light. But what did Stephanie say? All right, Olivia? That it does make a difference. One little candle does make a difference. A small difference, but it makes a difference. No, we can't change the world. But you can do one good deed or two good deeds. And if everybody lights the candle, that's what we should be doing. You know, and we should try to help others and be kind to others. And finally, Stephanie says, you know, one little candle does make some light. And it's a very important principle. You don't get discouraged because, oh, what's the use? Look at me. No, you light your candle. You shine. You do the right thing, regardless of what anyone else does. When Stephanie met her friend, she said, let's do as much good as we can for one week. That's too much work, complained Lori. It's just for one week, said Stephanie. Okay, grumbled Lori, but just one week. Just one week for me, too, insisted Cindy. Good, said Stephanie. What can we do? Mrs. Williams just had an accident and can barely walk, said Lori. Let's see if she needs groceries. That's a great idea, said Stephanie. When Mrs. Williams opened the door, they greeted each other. Then Cindy said, We came to help you. Do you need anything from the store? Well, I declare, said Miss Williams as she gave each of them a hug. That's so nice of you to think of an old crippled lady like me. I do need some eggs, milk, and bread. We'll get the food for you, said Lori. Thank you, said Mrs. Williams as she shuffled to the table to get a purse. Then she gave the girls the money to buy the food. What are these girls doing here? Isaiah? They're trying to help that old lady. Yeah, they're trying to help an old lady. Now, I come from New York City. Now, down here in Houston, we don't have any subways. But I went on subways many, many times. Go to work in the subways. I used to work downtown Manhattan, and, and I used to work at a place when I was a teenager, and I used to have to go drive this, take the subway and deliver things. And you know, there's sometimes there's old people that come in there, and a polite thing to do is give up your seat. You see an elderly person, you help them. If you go to your you have family affairs and you need a chair, volunteer to help. Not let old grandma and grandpa do it. Say, I'll, I'll help you, I'll do this. 
and you see somebody, just like in school, if you see a girl, maybe she's handicapped or a boy, needs help, you'll help them. You know, we ought to be kind, kind to one another, loving one another. It's critical that we are like this, and that's what she's doing. And to give up a seat, like in a crowded subway. Sometimes an elderly person comes in the subway, and these young kids, they will sit there, they won't give up a seat. They're not polite, polite anymore. And I do something, I open the door for my wife in the car. When we go driving, I always open the car, let her, and I close it for her. I still try to be polite. You know, and I say, oh, that's, you're old fashioned. No, no, it's a polite thing to do. You know, and I, I lift up the heavy loads, you know, and there's work to be done. I try to help. I'm a helper also at home. Not that I see my wife do all the work and stuff like this. I also sometimes pitch in, and I'm dangerous when I cook. I don't cook a lot. But if I do cook, I experiment, you know, and I mix up all different kinds of things, you know. And sometimes it turns out good, and sometimes, mm, let's forget about that. Okay. <laughs> let's see what happens now. While walking to the store, Stephanie said, when we're finished shopping, let's clean up the trash in front of the houses. We'll call it Light Your Candle Crusade. That's too much work, complained Lori. It sure is, added Cindy. We'll start with one house, said Stephanie. Okay, mumbled Laurie and Cindy. As they began sweeping the sidewalk, some boys <laughs> laughed at them and said, Look at those silly girls. I guess we got new street cleaners. I'm embarrassed, said Lori. I'm quitting. Me too, said Cindy. You can't leave, insisted Stephanie. You made a promise to do it for one week. Okay, grumbled Lori and Cindy. Notice the three girls here. There's Stephanie with the broom and the other two girls helping. There's some garbage they're picking up over here. And there's these three boys. And they start doing what? Hi, Jocelyn? They're laughing. They're laughing. <laughs> Look at those silly girls. They're trash cleaners. And you know, that's what happens sometimes when you're doing good. You have two ears. Some things should go through and something should go into your heart. And when those boys will laugh at you, just ah, let them laugh. That's not gonna change what I'm doing. I'm gonna keep on doing what's right. And that takes courage. And a life that's gonna happen sometimes. When you're doing the right things, some boys and some girls will make fun of you. That's your problem. I'm gonna do what's right regardless what anybody else does. That's a boy and girl who has courage. After cleaning the sidewalk, the girls went to clean the empty lot across the street. How can we get that old refrigerator on the sidewalk so the trash collectors can take it away, asked Stephanie. It's too heavy for us. Those men across the street can help us, suggested Cindy. Why don't we ask them? The three girls asked the men, Could you please help us move the refrigerator? We're trying to clean up the neighborhood. The men smiled and said, Sure. We'll be glad to help you move the refrigerator. Thank you, said the girls. I think cleaning up the neighborhood is an excellent idea, said one of the men. As the men were taking the refrigerator to the sidewalk, one of them asked, is there anything else we can do to help? Could you please put those old tires and bed also on the sidewalk, asked Stephanie. Sure, he replied. Thank you, said Stephanie. We're so glad you joined our Light Your Candle Crusade. On the way home, a drug dealer said to the girls, I've got something free for you. What is it? asked Cindy. It will make you feel good, he said. We don't want your drugs, said Stephanie. You're ruining our neighborhood. The drug dealer got mad and yelled, Get out of here. If I ever see you again, you'll be sorry. Stephanie and her friends ran around the corner to where they lived. That drug dealer is selling drugs to the kids around here, said Stephanie, and he's threatening us. Let's tell our parents, said Cindy. That's a good idea, said Stephanie and Lori. Now, what is the drug dealer doing here? Noah? He sell drugs to kids. Yeah, and usually they give them away free. This is how they get kids. Now, you might not be tempted here, but when you get older, some boys and girls do it, even in good neighborhoods. And it makes drugs, makes a person feel good. That's why they do it. 
and they take this and and it's bad for your health and some people will, will suffer tremendously in their life because they experimented well I want to just take one little nibble I'm just gonna try it you know and these drug dealers they'll even give it to you free at first to get you hooked then you have to have it then a lot of boys and girls end up stealing to get money to support their drug habits and they start smoking they start drinking they start drugs and it's a major major problem in many of our cities with drug addicts now you might not be aware of this here and you might be going to a good school or you might be homeschooled that's fine all right you're not aware but it does happen and where this book is reading and I'm talking to all the kids that are listening to this there's a little two-letter word that you should be saying and what is it no all right I'm not going to do anything that I know is going to harm my body. I'm going to take care of my body. And that's what I did ever since I was a young boy. I started to learn to eat right. I started to exercise. I lifted weights. I did weightlifting. And then I said, I'm going to eat right. I walked along the avenue. I'll buy some fruit in the store. Instead of eating junk food. And today I'm 84 years old and in good health. And I still do my exercise. I do push-ups, chin-ups, and things like this. I do leg raises. And I ride my bike 20 minutes a day. Because I could have a healthy body, so I can enjoy my life. And so I try to take care of my health. And so you too, learn to take care, eat right. Eat good food. And not do anything like this drug dealer. He doesn't care what's going to happen to these boys he, or girls. He hopes they get hooked on it so he can make money. He doesn't care how you're going to feel. And that's what these drug dealers are. They're bad people. And you have to learn to say, no, I go, I am going to do what is right? When Stephanie came home, her brother Billy said, Stop making a fool of yourself by being street cleaners. Everyone's laughing at you. Let them laugh, said Stephanie. Cindy, Lori, and myself have started a light your candle crusade. We're trying to help our... Billy interrupted and laughed, saying, <laughs> What a stupid idea. When Stephanie's dad and mom came home, she told them what the drug dealer had said. What? said her dad. We'll put a stop to that right away. I'll get some of our friends right now. We're going to meet that drug dealer. I agree, said Stephanie's mom. We need to do something to protect our children. Oh, good, said Stephanie. I'll tell Cindy and Lori so that they can tell their parents. Who did Stephanie speak to? Okay. Let me get Andrew? Uh, her mom and dad? Yes. If you have a problem, tell your parents. Trust them. Oh, I don't want them to know about it. Well, if something bad, tell them. I don't, don't hide. They're your friends. They're your best friends in the world you'll ever have. All right? If you see something bad, tell them. Because they're the ones that are going to protect you and help you. And she's doing a very wise thing by going to her parents. Stephanie is going to her parents and telling them about the problem of these drug dealers. Let's notice what happens now. When Cindy and Lori's parents had heard what happened, they became angry and met in front of Stephanie's house. Other parents heard about it and joined the group. I'm sick and tired of these drug dealers destroying our children, said Stephanie's dad. Let's do something about it. I agree, said Lori's mom. Let's go. The whole group went straight to the drug dealer. When the drug dealer saw the girls with angry parents and men coming towards him, he was scared. Stephanie's dad put his finger in the drug dealer's face and said, Listen, we don't ever want to see you in our neighborhood again. Get out of here fast, said Lori's mom, or we're calling the police. The drug dealer took off running. The parents thanked the men who had come to help them chase the drug dealer away. Then Lori's mom said, I'm glad we were able to do some good in our neighborhood. Lori jumped up and yelled, it's working. It sure is, said Stephanie. We're beginning to light candles. The next day at school, a fight broke out between two boys. When a teacher tried to stop them, one of the boys shoved the teacher aside and kept fighting. As the girls walked home, Stephanie asked, what can we do to stop the fighting in school? This constant fighting makes it hard for teachers to teach. It sure does, said Cindy. My dad said that our school was once the best in the city, now it's the worst. 
I got an idea, said Lori. Tomorrow's open school night. Let's tell our parents what's happening in our school and ask them to speak to the principal. Let's do it, said Cindy. The girls went home and told their parents about the problems in their school. Stephanie's and Cindy's parents were willing to go to school, but Lori's mom said, I'm too busy. I can't go. Please, Mom, begs Lori, come just this one time. Okay, sighed Lori's mom. The next night, their parents spoke to the principal about the girls and the problems in their school. The principal was glad to see the parents. What are the girls concerned about now, Kylie? They're concerned about the fighting going on in school. Yes, about the fighting, because if you have fighting in the school, and I've seen that, and I was a dean, assistant dean of boys in the high school, and I've seen it some of the things, it's horrendous some of the things I've seen in some of the schools. I went to Low East Side, South Bronx, Harlem, Bedford Stuyvesant, some very bad schools, very bad. And these boys and girls in those schools will suffer when they graduate, and you find many of them, they can't, they're not fit to go to college. College has to retrain them when they go to college, some of them, because of the bad schools that they're in. And that's why I wrote this year book, Schools in Crisis, trying to help schools become better so kids can learn and make something out of themselves. And so also you, as, as boys and girls here, do good in school. If you're homeschooled, study, learn, make something out of yourself. You're only young once, and you can never go back again, remember. So make the best of your education. Get something into this head up here, all right? <laughs> and don't be lazy. Some boys and girls are so lazy. They don't want to work. They don't want to study. They don't want to do their own work. And they complain and complain and complain. But you be wise. You be wise. You make something out of yourself, okay? And these girls now, they're trying to help the school so the kids can learn something. Let's have a parents meeting, suggested Sydney's mom. Excellent, said the principal. I'll tell the PTA president about the girls in the meeting. Many parents came to the meeting. The principal said to the parents, this meeting was called because three of our students have started a light your candle crusade. Then he told how the girls had cleaned up the neighborhood, went shopping for elderly neighbors, and help rid the neighborhood of drug dealers. At the end of his speech, he said, Will Stephanie, Lori, and Cindy please come up to the platform? The parents stood and cheered as the three girls walked down the aisle. After the principal thanked the girls, the president of the PTA stood up and said, Let's make our school the best in the city. Shall we all join the Light Your Candle Crusade? Yes, shouted all the parents. In order for our children to learn, the president continued, we must make sure we have an orderly school. Let's make some rules that will help our school to become great again. Do you have any suggestions? Parents stood up and said, students must not fight in school. Students cannot run in the halls. Students must stay in their rooms during class. Students must respect and obey teachers. A parent must come to school if any student disobeys the rules. Does everyone agree, asked the president? Yes, exclaimed all the parents. Why are rules important? Hi, Juliet? Because if you don't have rules, life will just be a mess. That's a very good answer. If you don't have rules, Everything's going to be a big mess. And that's what happens in these schools. I can't, I, all I can tell you what I've seen, terrible some of these schools. Kids running around the hall, kicking in doors, sitting on desks, fighting. I had my foot stomped on. I've stopped fights. I had girls being grabbed by boys in the, in the classroom. I mean, just ridiculous things that happen in the school. And I just went one day. Terrible. And you gave a good answer, a mess. But the sad thing is these kids in those schools are suffering. I never forget one girl being picked on in the school because there was no discipline. And I'm hoping you parents who are listening to this, support disciplined schools. Teachers need to have the authority to discipline their kids and give authority to the principals too to have disciplined schools. Some of the rules and regulations from the 
the Board of Education that hinders a lot of teachers and principals for having effective schools. And I encourage the parents to do something about it so your schools are, have discipline in the classroom because only in the disciplined classroom can learning take place. And so if you go to that kind of a school, be very, very thankful. Rules help schools to be orderly so children can learn. That night, the parents went home and warned their children. You had better behave in school. We don't want to come to school because you're not obeying the rules. The next day, the PTA president told the students the rules and warned them. If anyone disobeys these rules, he or she will immediately be brought to the principal's office and your parents will have to come to school. There was a remarkable transformation in school that day. Everyone followed the rules, except for one boy. Larry, who usually got into trouble, started a fight with another boy in the cafeteria. Immediately, the principal came and took Larry to his office. Larry had to wait in the principal's office until one of his parents came. When Larry's mother came and found out what he had done, she apologized to the principal. Then she said, He's going to get punished at home, too. If Larry ever acts up again, make sure you let me know. And then she took Larry home. In school, the students began to behave. Now teachers could teach and students could learn. News of what happened spread to other schools. They also began light your candle crusades. Meanwhile, the girls continued helping people on their block. When the girls began painting the handrails for an elderly lady who could not afford a painter, the neighbors felt ashamed. Some of the neighbors helped the girls. Others went to their landlord to ask if their houses could be fixed and painted. Their street was becoming the best looking street in the entire neighborhood. When a newspaper reporter heard what the girls were doing, he went to interview them. He asked, how would someone start a lighter candle crusade? Stephanie smiled and said, it's easy. Find someone who is needy and go and help that one. Then try to get others to do the same and never get discouraged. That's some of the best advice I've ever heard, said the reporter. He took pictures of the girls and wrote a story about them for the Sunday newspaper. The headline read, three young girls transform neighborhood and school. Now everyone in the city heard what the girls were doing. Light your candle crusades were starting everywhere. The whole city was being transformed. What did Stephanie tell that news reporter? Emma? She said to try and help find somebody that's needy and um, help others do the same. I, and then she said something else about that. And what else did she say? Claire? Never get discouraged. Yes. Help someone that who is needy. Never give up and don't get discouraged. Many times people get discouraged. It's useless. It's hopeless. No, you're, we're just good people. We keep on helping people. We're still going to be kind to people. And that's critical not to get discouraged when you're doing good. And that was a lesson. When the newspaper reporter heard that, let's listen to what he said. Now when houses needed repairs, people would fix them. When people saw someone stealing, they would yell, stop stealing. When they saw anyone selling drugs or gangs fighting, they would call the police. Now people felt safe to walk in the neighborhood. When students misbehaved, teachers would call parents. Schools were orderly and students were learning. Now children were no longer afraid to go to school. All these things happened because one young girl decided to light her candle. And now, an award-winning song from Character Kids. Listen up, yo. We're on a mission. It's not a game to make a difference. To make a change Just one spark Can light a flame You can change your world Come on, light your candle today Change. 
change your world.